Welcome to the second part of the video about George Orwell's essay, Shooting an Elephant. Students, I have already discussed the first two paragraphs of the essay in the first part of the video. Today, we will begin with the third paragraph of the essay that describes the minor incident which Orwell narrates as his personal experience when he was a police officer in Burma. The incident is very minor. It is a tiny incident, not a very major incident, but its implications are very important. It has major implications. So it goes like this. One day Orwell received information from a Burmese sub-inspector that an elephant had gone amok and was revising the bazaar. He has even killed an Indian coolie. He immediately set out with a small rifle to see what was happening. He came to know that um, uh, it was not uh, a wild uh, elephant but a tamed one who had gone must. His owner, the Mahawat, had set out in pursuit but he had taken the wrong direction. Now here we notice that Orwell uses words like Bazaar, Mast, Mahawat such in the words and this shows the impact of Indian language and culture on his writing style and this is because we all know that Orwell was born in India and had also spent the first few years of his childhood in India only and this double identity creates a complex relationship of the author with imperialism also although a European a machine to perform imperial will, he fully sympathized with the natives of Burma. So when he reached the town where the elephant was, he noticed that the attack of must had gone and the animal was now quietened. Take the next slide. Even the native people also told him that it would not harm anybody now unless it was disturbed. Orwell felt like sparing the life of the elephant and letting it go away because now it is disturbing no one, it is now harmless. But the eyes of all the native people were focused on him. He had to act as a sahib and rise up to the expectations of the natives. So the whole crowd was looking at him and he was like a puppet in their hands. Their rising will is influencing him to kill that animal. They expected him to kill the elephant and if he did not kill it, he would be thought to be a coward and would be ridiculed. They will insult him. They will laugh at him. As a result, he decided to kill the elephant, not so much with a view to provide any kind of security to the natives, but to avoid the ridicule he would cause if he did not act in accordance with their wishes. So here we see that how imperialism in a way is self-destructive. Okay, uh, I am just uh, showing you these two quotations. When the white man turns tyrant, it is his own freedom that he destroys. So somehow if somebody wants to control another person or another country or anyone, he also loses his freedom in one way or the other. So when the colonizers, they turn tyrants, they um, use violence against the people, even in their eyes, in the eyes of the natives or in the eyes of the colonized, somehow they have to lose their freedom. Because if you are tying someone, okay, if you are tying someone, the end of that chain also ties you. 
okay so in this way when orwell went there he cannot use his own will and the will of the natives pressurizes him to kill that innocent animal at the end of the essay orwell describes the reaction of the shooting of the elephant among the natives and the europeans in the town he seeks to provide a justification for his act of shooting the elephant through the fact that it had already killed a native kuli so he tried to somehow save his face Uh, in this way through this essay orwell demonstrates the futility and horror of imperialism to the readers using metaphor and allegory to support his point he tells the story of an occasion on which he shot and killed an elephant he plainly lays out his feeling about imperialism in a straightforward manner with detailed metaphoric descriptions that support the purpose of this essay um i am just changing the slide orwell precedes the anecdote of his time in burma with his basic opinion on imperialism which we have already discussed in the first part of this week uh, of the video that it is an evil thing imperialism is an evil thing it then goes on to explain in detail the dirty conditions of those under the rule of british imperialism and his own confusion about this hatred of the empire he serves and the rage against the evil spirited little beasts who tried to make his job impossible this sets the scene for orwell's launch into this elaborate metaphor which we have just now discussed an anecdote that tells the story of orwell's attempt to find and get rid of a rampaging elephant then follows the talks about the lack of information the burmese people gave him when he was attempting to fight the elephant like an outsider's view of imperialism a story always sounds clear enough at a distance but when we go closer it becomes vaguer this description shows how imperialism can look like a good idea until one sees closer to the source after discovering the true source in orwell's example that is the elephant one finds the wake of disaster it has left behind it orwell describes the kuli who was killed by the giant creature and it is an obvious metaphor for the first glimpse a person gets when they find out what imperialism is truly like by going on to detail his reluctance about shooting the elephant he shows another angle on the futility of imperialism orwell reaches his climax when he tells about the burmese pressure on him to shoot the elephant there was indeed a futility of the white man's dominion in the east i am just quoting his words he describes how every burmese citizen pressured him to shoot the elephant and how he is only an absurd puppet pushed by the will of the burmese he says through this that no white man has a place or purpose in the east and least of all when he is inducing imperialism the death of the elephant uh powerless to move and yet powerless to die these were the lines from his essay only further implements the fact that imperialism will accomplish nothing and is only a horrible way to go about doing nothing the elephant portrays imperialism after attempting and partially succeeding to wreak havoc and the dead kuli 
imperialism finds itself dying due to those it controls. The Burmese indirectly willing or will to kill the elephant and cannot remove itself from its situation, much like the elephant in its dying minutes. However, the elephant does eventually pass away and Orwell uses this as yet another allegory. He believes that imperialism will fade and be defeated though it may take a very long time. Just like the elephant, it took much time in dying. Similarly, even it will take time, gradually they will lose power over people. Imperialism will fade away. All these examples and allegories eventually lead up to one conclusion that imperialism is indeed futile. By describing the dead gully, the non-resistible pressure from the Burmese to sheath the elephant and the tragically slow death of the elephant, Orwell ties together his thesis and ultimately demonstrates through personal experience and metaphor how imperialism is pointless and wrong. So in the end, we can say that the themes of this essay includes imperialism. The anti-imperialistic feelings of the author Orwell, he describes those feelings and uh, narrating an incident, he just tells us that imperialism is an evil thing. Then second theme, we can say the fear of humiliation. How the power of the powerless dominates him at the end. And he has to act according to their will, the will of the Burmese, the natives, the colonized. And again, the Burmese uh, people, uh, whatever they did, it just shows that the resentment these people have in their hearts against imperialistic, uh, against imperialism, we can say. So in this way, overall, George Orwell, he shows his anti-imperialistic feelings and tells that imperialism is an evil thing. Okay, thank you so much.